he's going to get uh, flipped around there with the grapple truck. There's one piece of rail there off to the right I found. We have two Sperry rails. Uh, Sperry rail is a rail that has a defect in it found by an ultrasonic rail tester. And uh, some of the... We've had Sperry in here before. Ensco, Nordco, and Herzog. And it doesn't matter who finds it. If it's Nordco, we still call it a Sperry rail if it has a defect. And he, I've got to get... Uh, he's going to come up here in the in the siding with his gravel truck throw this rail off the top so I can measure and see what I got down here on the bottom try to see if I can find the neatest piece 30 a little bit less than 39 and it's cold out here it's uh, 50 degrees this morning coming to work and it's significantly colder down around <laughs> we had snow in here a little bit ago so that's where we're at all right, we do have some help today, and that's good. That's real good. All right, we'll be back. Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. And welcome to another edition of That's Railroad, where we bring the railroad to you. And we do love doing it. And uh, my glasses got water on them. It's been snowing out here a little bit. I just got a truck. I had to move the truck ahead off. But i uh, changing that. So uh, a couple pieces of rail today that have... Uh, defects in them okay so <laughs> let me show you what's going on with that uh, this is the rail defect chart that I got uh, most of these are not bad at all this is uh, the one we're changing first the transverse fissure uh, it's a 90% growth which is very very big it has this rail has to get changed so uh, I need to get a 39 footer less than 39 footer stick of rail here and uh, this one right here the uh, head and web, web head and web separation within a joint area we're going to change that that is a 16 inch long head and web separation and that's not good either the rest of them are uh, very minimal so uh, what this 15% here this transfer issue I will uh, probably tomorrow I don't have time don't have a real drill with me but I'll put a, a set of joint bars on that 15% okay so very good hope you enjoyed today's show and uh, thank you thank you thank you very much for tuning in this stick here I got the bolts loosened up here hydraulic spike bore you want to crack All right. the inside pulled out huh crack the inside pulled out yes sir yeah. you've done this before haven't you spikes up a little bit pull the outside all the way out I gotta get to work
Okay. That was quick. It sure is nice to have good help. We got some real good help. a little bit off of that and then drill some holes because I didn't have anything that would fit. All right. How about that? He got it. Wow. How about that? Nice. Back in my prime. That was a long time ago. You don't grow when they're spiking. New bit helps, doesn't it? Somebody could hit a spike too and didn't hit the rail, Wonderful. So I've got the uh, 16 inch long head and web separation. Let's see what it looks like when we pull it out of there. That's a Milwaukee battery powered. Impact. All right, we're up here at Mount Post One. That uh, really changed out down here. It took us about 35 minutes. That's pretty good. Got some good help here. Real good help. All right, we'll be back. I got to get to work. This is a short piece. This is a weird piece. 38 foot, 9 and 1 half inches long. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had I found one just a little shorter. I never thought I would find it, but I did. 
about that. That was easy. Okay. Get all this mess cleaned up. Get the new rail set in. It is a used rail up there. He's getting. Okay, <laughs> got both our rails changed, and uh, hope you enjoyed today's video. And uh, so we get close to our quitting time here, but uh, I'm tired. <laughs> oh well, I'm gonna home and take a nap with Freddy. How's that? How about them spikes? And if you don't know who Freddy is, I have a uh, second channel called That's Dave's Other Doing. There's a link in this video's description to go watch it. Okay, this is how it was marked here. This uh, head and web, web separation. Uh, this is the day after we put this new rail in. Uh, 18 degrees this morning. <laughs> nice morning. Anyway, uh, everything's froze. The bow's all frozen. Uh, we didn't put the anchors on yesterday afternoon. Uh, we didn't, but it's no big deal. And I can't put them on this morning because everything's frozen, so I'll wait here. So it's no big deal, but I will get the anchors on here at a, when the ballast thaws out. How about that? But I want to I, uh, get you a much better picture of this here. See? This is typically called a bolt hole crack if it was just right here. Crack between your bolt holes. And... No doubt the extra holes in here. Again, I have no idea why these were drilled like this, but uh, it didn't come from the factory. Uh, but uh, as I said, this would be typically called a bolt hole crack, but you can see this crack going up through here, and that's what I call the head and web separation. See it right there. So, very good thing. Very good thing we found this. Uh, there's no doubt. That at some point in the future this head would have blown off of there 
So, with that said, uh, I want to say this. The uh, Code of Federal Regulations. We have a Class 2 track here with uh, 25 mile an hour track speed. The Code of Federal Regulations does not require Class 2 track to have ultrasonic rail inspections done. All right, but uh, we do it. We, uh, we get the ultrasonic rail inspectors come in here twice a year, and that's just awesome, awesome, awesome. It's not something that we have to do, but it is uh, very definitely a uh, very important safety thing, I think, and it's just wonderful that uh, they bring them in here. We also uh, get a geometry truck in here once or twice a year. So that's wonderful too, but that's geometry trucks different than ultrasonic rail testing. Anyway, this, uh, the little bit of money that they spend to find this and that, uh, like I said, that other, that earlier one, that, uh, 90% growth, we had two derailments happening here sometime in the future because of this and that other one. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the ultrasonic testers charge, uh, it's barely reasonable. It depends on the company and uh, where they got to come from is uh, a lot of different things. Somewhere between five to ten thousand. But my goodness gracious, you have a derailment here or a mile down track. Uh, if that old rail had been in here and the head blew out, or uh, the one that we changed down there with that ninety percent growth, uh, <laughs> you know it's. Uh, it's just fantastic what I'm trying you know it's just fantastic that we do get the ultrasonic rail testers in here when they don't have to spend the money but they sure saves derailments in the future because they do do it so I'm very thankful very 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 thankful that uh, we do do that okay wonderful uh, our both our rails look really good setting in there now that we changed and uh, Okay, I'm heading down track and replacing bolts. I've got the, and we, we had real cold weather, then we had warm weather, then cold weather, warm weather, and now it's cold again, and that kind of stuff is hard on track. So, so I got 26,000 bolts in this 16 miles of jointed track that we have here, and there's, uh, I said that weather change, weather's hard on track here in southwestern Pennsylvania, and you know, all we run is these heavy cold trains, so, that's hard on track too, but that's what we got. You know, that was all this uh, jointed track was United States Steel uh, who built the track. So there you go. All right, we'll get uh, back here and uh, I'll finish up this video at the end of yesterday. All right, wonderful. This is a a very very important safety. Thing that we do is getting these testers in here and it's wonderful